Hi, my name's Mark. I'm one of the pastors here at Trillium. Last week, I came across an opinion piece in the Globe and Mail, the title of which was, The Prodigal Son's Older Brother Was Right. In the story of the prodigal son, the younger son takes half the family estate, fortune, goes off to a distant land and squanders it on prostitutes and, and slothful living, and then comes to his senses and comes home. But the older brother will not join in the celebration of the household with the, his younger brother's return. And, and in the opinion piece, the author aligns themselves with the older brother's unwillingness to forgive and goes through a, a litany of, uh, of criticism against the forgiveness culture that we find ourselves in. You know, it extends to the story itself and to our political culture and to our religious culture and to our psychological culture. And at the end of the article, I had a lot of sympathy for what the author was trying to get at, this cheap forgiveness culture that we live in. Yet, when I went through the comments, I came across one, one particularly interesting response. If not forgiveness, what then? Like, what is the author asking us to do? Not forgive? To hold on to our grudges and grievances against each other? We know where that's going to take us. Pretty sure that it's obvious to all all of us where that's going to get us in life. I was thinking about Nelson Mandela. You know, 28 years in prison, from the age of 44 to the age of 72, I'm thinking through all the things that he missed out in life in those 28 years in jail. You know, seeing his kids grow up, seeing his grandchildren born, you know, missing out on his career, his marriage failed, let alone the suffering and torture that went on in the jail itself while he was in prison. And he's released at 72, and then a couple of years later, he's president of South Africa, and he embarks the nation on a path of healing through forgiveness. And I'm thinking to myself, what happens... What would have happened to South Africa if Nelson Mandela had instead embarked on a path of vengeance, justice-seeking against those who had done himself and others like him injury in life? Where would South Africa be today if Nelson Mandela had chosen vengeance over forgiveness? We all suffer hurts in life. We suffer the pain of our hurts. The real challenge is what we're going to do with our hurts. I think forgiveness is a commitment not to weaponize our hurt in life to be used against others. It's a form of vengeance taking or retribution. You know, it's easy to take a little hurt or a big hurt and convert it into a weapon to be used against others, especially people who are close to us because they're vulnerable to us. We can impact on them. In our forgiveness, our forgiveness we can extend polarization. We can deepen the divisions. We can multiply the pain of life, the hurt of life, even for, beyond what we've ourselves suffered. And in the midst of all this, I hear Jesus' simple words, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Simple words, yet within them is a call to renunciation, a, re- a renunciation of using our hurt as a weapon. In a sense, putting the weapon of our hurt down and instead offering forgiveness as the antidote to the growing sense of polarization that unfolds from our desire to take retribution against one another. We, we talk a lot here at Trillium about being God's hands in the world. That's a powerful statement when you think about it. The Gospels make clear to us that God's hands are forgiving hands. That if we want to extend something, a power through us that we believe comes from God, then it must come through forgiving hands to others. And not just forgiving hands, but forgiven hands too. Because if we're going to receive the forgiveness of others, we need to open our hands to each other in, in a vulnerability, in a, in a sense of peace to our neighbor. In fact, it's in the giving and receiving of forgiveness that a new life is revealed to us. A life built on peace a life built on caring and love. Today, I really commit myself to not weaponizing my hurt anymore. I'm tired of hurting other people with with my hurt. So I'm going to put the weaponization, the weapon of my hurt down. I'm going to de-weaponize my hurt and instead extend my hands in forgiveness, giving and receiving.